West Ham then uh, get this second half away, 2-0 up. And in fact, they beat Chelsea here 2-0 last season and got a goalless draw at Stamford Bridge when Chelsea, I must say, were hard hit by injuries. So they took three points out of four last season as Jeff Hurst practically vanishes into the crowd there. They took three points out of four from Chelsea last season. Best with the throw for West Ham. Best again. Howe looking for it, but Mulligan finding it. And it's Keith Weller. Mulligan. Osgood well up in a fair bit of space ahead of Mulligan. But there's Weller making a good spirited run as well down the right. And Bobby Moore to take it off him. Oh, but there was a foul on Weller by Lampard. And so a free kick to Chelsea. Bobby Moore organising his men and his Hollands to take it. And I imagine it will be Dempsey, Hutchinson and Osgood that he'll be looking for. He said it was Weller, but Weller really wasn't alive to it and West Ham got it away. Mulligan again, but the ball bobbled. Best. Brooking. Good play there by Brooking. He was very nearly shrugged off that ball by uh, Hollins. Probably uh, made him lose a little bit of control. It's given Chelsea possession through Hudson now to Weller. A long and a deep one. And one that was too high. So a goal kick then to West Ham with Peter Grotier, who's keeping Bobby Ferguson, the Scottish international, out of this West Ham side. And certainly Grotier has made no mistakes today. Lining up looking for this goal kick. Hurst neatly headed inside there for Greaves. And Greaves through now to Best. Oh, and Best planting it straight. Oh, but the whistle had gone. The whistle had gone for offside. To the mystification of Clyde Best. But Best was given offside. Hinton. To Osgood. And now to Mulligan. Hudson. Looking to turn it in. In fact, he turned it in against Brooking's hands, but it was uh, purely accidental. Lampard to Hurst. Very fast. Hinton beautifully with Greaves outside him. Waited nicely for Greaves, and Best is waiting in the middle. And so is Benetti. Hollins. And Hausman. Recovering quicker than uh, Billy Bonds. And a throw to West Ham. Hinton to Osgood. Faced by Moore. Going on, flicking it nicely there for Hutchinson. Oh, tremendous goalkeeping by Grotier from Hutchinson, and a really tremendous piece of goalkeeping by this young fellow, Peter Grotier. And Best really storming up that wing. Hurst and Greaves in the middle for him. Here's Hurst, oh, the sort that if you catch them, they're unstoppable, but if you don't catch them properly, well, it gives the crowd a laugh at any rate. I think we've lost another ball. It's the second ball that's gone over the stand today. There it is. High above that goal. So that's the second substitute ball we've had on. And Peter Benetti with the goal kick for Chelsea. I'm sure he appreciated Grosier's save as well. Greaves and Bonds and Stevenson back to Grotier Dempsey again getting above Clyde Best very hard to beat in the air John Dempsey at the back of the Chelsea defence and now Osgood and Hudson 
trying to shake off Bobby Moore but now the ball with Weller Hudson Hutchinson and Osgood in the middle it's Osgood going to try and get underneath this one and does so and it's down by Weller by Weller with 15 minutes of the second half gone Keith Weller's first goal for his new club Chelsea well, in fact, it's Keith Weller who starts this move and then finishes it off. Here he is picking up the ball on the right wing, pops it out to Alan Hudson and then goes rushing off through the middle. Howe's with him and there's a bit of a tussle there, but just watch Peter Osgood's jump, a beautifully timed jump, cushions the ball off delicately there. Keith Weller comes flying in and gets it into the net by the end of his toenail. Well, that was the breakthrough Chelsea wanted. And it might well put extra pressure now on West Ham because Chelsea, even then they were 2 0 down, had an air of confidence about them and looked very good indeed and good and sharp and busy. We could well be in for a really tremendous finish here now at Upton Park. Now Hudson for Chelsea. Hinton. Oh, and Osgood on his own. And really, there was a little bit of slackness in the West Ham defence there to allow Osgood so much room, so close to goal. Jeff Hurst. To Howe. Greaves has gone on ahead of him, and Hinton's gone with him. Greaves getting past Hinton on his right foot. Oh, that's good, Eddie. It's Greaves. Very nearly rammed that one home for number three for West Ham. Mulligan. To Hudson. Certainly Greaves has had a good lively game. He's been running well for West Ham, making himself available. But here's the trouble at the other end now as Osgood gets up well. And it's there by Weller, number two. Keith Weller's second goal. Chelsea's second goal, 2-2. Two -two. An almost identical goal to the last one. There's Hudson, slips the ball to Mulligan, moves across there as if to say, well, leave it to me, I know how it's done. There's the cross in the air, and watch Osgood's heading power again as he comes in here and beats Bonds this time, hangs in the air, lays off that ball, and Weller is stealing on the far post there as the ball goes through Bobby Moore's legs, and it's not too difficult a task to score from that position. And you can see how happy that makes the man. A brace of goals. Well, a Chelsea supporter, well delighted with Keith Weller, but I wouldn't have thought that the police, yes, indeed, they're closing on him very quickly. I wouldn't have thought they'd have been very pleased. But a good goal by Weller, well taken when West Ham faltered in defence. And that's the result of it. You just can't go onto the field even to congratulate your favourites. And that's a lesson for all young football watchers. So Chelsea from two goals down have got back brilliantly into this game at 2-2 with a quarter of an hour to go. While well, the situation has changed radically, but their expressions never change, those managers. Hausman took that well, but he's got Bonds with him. And Bonds has given Hausman absolutely nothing this afternoon. Here's Billy Bonds again, setting up another West Ham attack. Jeff first. First time in, aiming towards Clyde Best. And Bonds, just over that Chelsea bar. Well, Benetti really would have had no chance with that one. He must have been very relieved indeed to see that clear the crossbar. Proof that this game is quite easily in the hands of both these sides. Harris. Osgood. But straight to Lampard. Greaves getting there before Dempsey. Beautifully controlled by Best. And Hurst was offside. Play on, says the referee. A good decision by Mr. Nicholson. Keeping the game flowing. 
Billy Bonds. Hurst. Greaves calling for it, but Greaves at the moment well offside. And Hurst knowing that, so he gives it to Best instead. Bobby Howe trying to get underneath it. Brooking trying to get underneath it. Bonetti right out of his penalty area, finally getting it away. But it's coming back again. Brooking to Howe. And Greaves with his hand. And if only he'd known that Clyde Best was behind him in a position to get above it and head it down. But he didn't. <laughs> Bennett pushing Hutchinson in the back as they went for that one as we go into the last minute of this game. Plus what injury time there is. And it's going to be John Dempsey to plant another ball high into that West Ham penalty area. Dempsey a high one. And Hutchinson well offside. Now to Bobby Moore. Indeed. A fine attacking game in this London derby match. Bobby Howe having scored that beautiful goal early on for West Ham. And Jeff Hurst having made it two. And then we get into this second half when Keith Weller, number seven for Chelsea, scores two to make it two two. And so the final score at Upton Park is West Ham United two, Chelsea two. Well, an honourable draw indeed. And the man who made it so, Keith Weller of Chelsea. And delighted to say that Keith is our studio guest today. With him, Jimmy Hill. 2-0 down, Keith. Not a very encouraging prospect for Chelsea. Did you think you had any hope at that time? Uh, well, I thought we made a few chances in the first half, Jim, you know. Um, unfortunately, we never take, take them. But um, West Ham seemed to start a lot quicker than what we did. Were you impressed with West Ham yesterday? In the first half, I thought they played very well, yeah. Especially okay. midfield, you know. What about the Chelsea defence? I mean, West Ham were making chances pretty well all through that game, and uh, obviously if Chelsea want to improve on last season's performance, they can't go allowing sides to make chances like that, can they? No, not really. We'll have to uh, tighten up, but I think that's uh, up to Dave Sexton, you know. Was it really an open game because it was Chelsea-West Ham? Or, I mean, I saw Fulham or in, in the week, which uh, the League Cup match, which seemed very tight, and yet uh, it's same, similar kind of tactics, yet this game seems so open and so free. Yes, I think it was a it was a very good game to play. You know, it was exciting, uh, especially in the second half. You know, when the, our two goals came, especially. And uh, I wonder when you were going to mention those two <laughs> goals. <laughs> anyway, they were first class goals um, supplied for you, both of them really, by a combination of Hudson and Osgood. Mm. Uh, do you find it uh, you read Ozzy's mind when he's going up for these high balls? Well, I think that's about the first time that uh, I've received two headers. Off of here you are now. You're actually on the ball here. Uh, on the right wing, and after this you streak off at great speed. You play it out to Alan Hudson there, go flying through, and there's a bit of nasty there, a bit of elbowing and pushing between you and Howe, who's run back. There goes Ozzy, beautiful header, hanging in the air, yeah. and it's this moment, you see how much Bobby Howe's lost you, by about the end of a foot there, he chased you all the way back from that first run, the first touch that you had, and it still ends in the back of the net. Yeah. It shows how narrow it is between sort of defence and attack. Yeah. Yeah. Any players that have particularly impressed you at Chelsea, who you thought since you've joined them have been better players than uh, than beforehand? Um, yeah, Charlie, uh, Charlie Cook and Peter Osgood. Um, In what way have you been impressed with Charlie Cook? Oh, his, his ball control is fantastic, really. You know, he's got so much skill and close control. It's uh, unbelievable. Better than any player you've ever seen? Any player I've seen personally, you know, to to play with, um, he's definitely got. More control than I've ever seen. And he's not even in the side. That says a lot for Chelsea's strength this season. Yeah, that's a shame. That <laughs> what about Peter Osgood uh, as a player to play with? Do you find his mind works quickly, or what is it about him that uh, that is a great assistance to you? Um, well, you know, he's he's got a lot of skill, obviously, for a big fellow. He's good in the air. He's got everything, really. You know, he, he's always up there. He's always niggling, and he's always tackling back and biting in and anywhere near goal. 
he's uh, deadly, but well, he hasn't scored this season yet. No, he hasn't scored, but of course he made the second goal for you yesterday with, again, almost an identical move, and it was a wonder, as the ball was coming over there, I said, there's the same move as the first one, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Alan Hudson again making the cross. Here he gives the ball to Mulligan and sort of says, uh, no, I think I'd rather cross it now because I know what to do. Then goes and picks it up again from him, and there's almost an identical cross. Osgood this time is jumping against Bennett, wins it, and I think you'll just see a touch here which helps you get the goal. There it is from Ian Hutchinson, deflects that ball through Bobby Moore's legs yeah. and give you the kind of chance that uh, everybody always wants to have. And of course you just knock that in with your left foot for a change. Well, <laughs> Yeah, that very, uh, <coughs> very often use that one, Jim. The £100,000 obviously has not uh, worried you at all since you've been there. You've settled in uh, very well. I mean, no real problems about it? Um, it worried me a little bit, you know, uh, it was a lot of money, I thought, for a player, you know, especially myself, really. I played a lot in the first division, but uh, I needed the, these two goals, I think, to boost my confidence up a lot, and uh, I think it's done that. Well, it's certainly done that, and if you're going to go on playing with Osgood in that way, you know, I'm sure Chelsea are in for a season, and you are too. Thank you very much indeed, Keith Weller. Thank you, Jim. Mm. Well, not only Keith had a splendid game yesterday, but there was a man who we mentioned last week. He's from Bermuda, he's 19, he's built like Goliath, tremendous physique, and he had another first-class game. It's Clyde Best, a really superbly promising game, which I think is going to mean a lot of things in the future for him. Here he picks up the ball on the right. Watch the acceleration here past Ronnie Harris. Ronnie Harris is no easy defender to get by. There's all that jostling, but he's got the guts to go on and hit that kind of shot. A really tall player, and yet he's got, he's got agility. He can position himself quickly. Watch how he positions himself quickly to take that shot. And also his control when he's challenged. This is an outstanding feature. This one's given a foul, but look how he takes that ball down and turns in one movement, and a foul was given for him, which it, so he rolls the ball off quickly. But really superb skill. And finally we see him on the right wing, Clyde Best, 19 years of age, a future West Ham star without any doubt, dribbles down and makes this chance for Howe. I think that it was only this month last year that Clyde Best played his first game for West Ham. What a tremendous prospect. I suppose he's made more advance than any other player in the first division over the last 12 months. Now more action. Our second match on the programme today is from the second division. And it's had a high scoring game from Roker Park between Sunderland, fresh down from the first division against Watford. Commentator Jeff Thomas, pictures from Tyne Tees. Very keen to take the ball away quickly when they get the opportunity. This is Scully and nice run by him. Sinclair. And this is Wally, Scullion, and McGiven, that one should go against Big Vic McGiven, I think, taking the feet away from Stuart Scullion. Porterfield collecting the ball, just a little bit of delaying tactics, understandably there, on part, on the behalf of the uh, Sunderland defence. And Sinclair going back into the line, there he is on the left, three Sunderland players, and a deflection, it's Mayer. Wally, the man who scored it for the deflection. What a tragedy after exactly five minutes for Sunderland to concede a goal as easily as that. Hughes now. Todd. Porterfield's free. This is Porterfield now with the number 10 on his back. Harvey coming up. Park trying to flip it back, but pretty aimlessly so. Now the chance for Park. He's got every chance, and he scores! Bobby Park, who sometimes lacks experience, did everything right to score the equalising goal for Sunderland. So 1-1 one, one as we go into the second half. Very cool. Virtually no wind here at all at Broker Park. Pretty well ideal, although it's not the warmest of afternoons. Woods and off Porterfield's boot. So five minutes gone in this first, uh, in the second half and a very tame, quiet opening to the second period so far. It's, and that's not really first class type of clearance. It could lead Sunderland to a difficult situation. Park, Kerr, Park must run for it, he's lacking from support, only Baker going up. Four or five Watford players in the middle, Baker there, Hughes is there, there's Baker and Hughes, and well done Hughes! What a goal by Billy Hughes! Six minutes gone and Billy Hughes put 
puts the second one in the net for Sunderland. Wig and Garbutt. Hughes coming in. So it's Watford now who must do the chasing. Williams. Good ball there for Scullion. Wig's waiting for it in the middle if he can get the ball up to him. There's Wig coming in. And a great goal by Wig. And that one was on all the way. If Scullion could get that ball back. And Jimmy Montgomery now with two past him in his 300th league game. And so Sunderland want the full two points worth. They must come back and score again. And don't forget they started a goal down. They got back to 2-1 and that one a free kick for Park. And then of course they lost that goal lead with that last goal by Wig. And have the chance perhaps to recover from this free kick. Hughes on the far side, Baker in the middle of the front of the penalty area. Kerr just going into it. Sunderland players must watch against offside. There's Hughes. And a great header from young Bobby Kerr. Hughes is down hurt, but Kerr is the man of the moment. And the Watford defence at sixes and sevens. But there's the man who made it. 3-2 from that free kick. And a bit of slackness creeping into this Sunderland defence. Almost as though they feel they might have it won and they haven't been marking as tightly as they should. Garbutt. McGiven. And a free kick for Garbutt. Obstruction by McGiven. There's McGiven. So now the pressure on the Sunderland backs. Garbutt. Scullion missed it. Well worn now. And Garbutt again. And a great goal there by Walter Lees. Scullion doing all the work. Montgomery caught in two mines. And Lees heading into virtually an open goal. 38 minutes gone. When Watford equalised. So well done Watford, a point well won after twice being behind. Now we come to our third match on the programme today, the outstanding match surely in the first division yesterday, between Leeds, who have already beaten Manchester United and Spurs, against the champions Everton at Ellen Road. Commentator Tommy Keith White. Macklin, pictures from Yorkshire Television, and Leeds in white. Persuading Cooper to tackle and then beating him. Royal is up there, so his husband, and Maidley's there, but it's coming up to Royal. Over the top, and that's an indirect free kick. Norman Hunter going right up on top of Royal. Mr. Finney's arm goes up. That was inside the penalty area, but it's indirect. Alan Ball. A moment of danger for the Leeds United defence. Ball and Kendall. And I think arguing with the referee as to whether that was not in fact a penalty, but it is an indirect free kick, and Ball and Kendall are both there. Husband on the goal line, Hurst and Royal waiting to pounce. A three-man wall by Leeds, and it comes back to Brown, unmarked, and Brown again! Oh, it's there! Sandy Brown has scored! And that move worked at the second attempt. The first shot was charged down, but it came out again to Sandy Brown. And that shot went in off the underside of the bar. And Everton have taken the lead after half an hour's play. Gordon West, clean catch to Alan Ball. Johnny Giles, beaten by Ball, who saw him coming. This is Morrissey. Husband's going up the middle. There's Husband. Nicely riding that tackle from Cooper. To Ball. A good shot by Ball. Straight behind it. And Everton kicking over nicely now. Playing some fine football. Paul Maidley. Johnny Giles. 
That's meant for Eddie Gray, but Tommy Wright gets there. Gray for Leeds. Clark. Norman Hunter. Deflection by Brian Labone. To Keith Newton, and he's made a gift of it to Jones. And here's Giles. It's there. Giles has equalised. A mistake by Brian Labone. And Johnny Giles making it one all with one minute to go before half time. Plus, of course, any time added for injury. There haven't been many. It's a free kick to Everton. Ball. Royal and Kendall unmarked. Royal, husband, a goal. And the least defence at fault there. Kendall was unmarked and husband was unmarked and he headed that in. So Everton take a 2-1 lead, a lovely goal. Royal, Bremner, meant for Lorimer. And, Lorimer. and now we go into the second half with more goals to come. Clark is in the middle and John Hurst stretches out a leg and hooks it behind for a corner. John Hurst, who plays number 10, but of course is primarily a midfield man and defender, getting his leg in the way of that. Happy enough, I would think, to give away a corner because Clark and Jones were both hovering. In swinging corner, again, Royal and Charlton on the line. West getting his fist to it. Mick Jones coming out to Hunter. Hunter not able to get a shot in. Laverne getting his body in the way. Terry Cooper, the Everton defence coming out. Ball. Free kick taken by Cooper. Giles. Headed out to Bremner. A beautiful goal by Bremner. What cool thinking by Bremner. He only had a split second to make up his mind, but saw the gap to the right of West. Hit that ball as it dropped. And it's two all. Corner to Leeds United. Madeley back to Lorimer and Bremner. It's there! Again, the cool head of this little man. While all around him are bodies, Bremner finds the only hole between defenders and the net and puts his shot through. Billy Bremner, the Leeds United skipper, scores another priceless goal. Indeed, how can you lose when you've got a Billy Bremner in your side? A warning there for West Ham, of course, who've got to go up to Ellen Road to face that powerful-looking lead side on Wednesday. That's all from the big match today. Hope very much that you've enjoyed it. We had a lot of action, a lot of fun, a lot of good goals as well. I hope that you'll join me again for On the Ball in World of Sport next Saturday at 5 to 1, and, of course, for the big match next Sunday. Last bit of action, I think the best goal of all the goals we've seen today, the one by Bobby Howe for West Ham against Chelsea yesterday afternoon at Upton Park. A real cracker, and here it comes again. Uh, Spokane, Bobby Howe!